praise God. Well, we've been on a series. It's kind of hard for me to get off this series, but uh, called Gifts and Callings. And hopefully you have Romans eleven twenty nine 29 memorized by now. And uh, but, uh, you know, God has glorious things for us. Do you believe that today? God has glorious things for the church. And uh, we need to get excited about what God has for us. Amen. And uh, I'm telling you, we are we are. How many people are heaven bound in here? Amen. <laughs> we're we're going to we're, we're we're bound to go to heaven. Amen. And um, it's better than being hell bound. Right. <laughs> so it's better to be heaven bound than hell bound. Right. And uh, and so that's something to be excited about. Amen. And so, see, God, God has something for each one of us to do. I'm going to say that again, God has something for each one of us to do. And, uh, you know, I'm going to say this, that sometimes we look at our own weaknesses. We look at, you know, how, you know, uh, our shortcomings. And we just, we, 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 we think, how can God do anything with us? Amen. And, you know, uh, that's what makes God so awesome. Because he can take somebody that's a nobody and make them a somebody. He can take somebody that is discounted by what the world would say has no value. And he can take somebody that could be, you know, uh, have no real giftings, but God can put his anointing on them and he can bring them up up front. Amen. In other words, God's anointing can bring you to the forefront of any area or any occupation of your life. Do you believe that today? His anointing. His anointing on us, amen, his grace on us. In other words, his grace on us, when we're doing what he's calling us to do, makes us uh, experts amen. in that field. Do you believe that today? And so uh, we just need to yield to the grace. Somebody say yield to the grace. Amen. So when we, to yield to the grace, we've got to stay under uh, uh, his mighty hand. We've got to continue to obey his word and stay in his will. Amen. And that's where the grace is at, is in his will. Amen. And I don't want to get out of the will uh, of God. And, uh, and in Romans eleven twenty nine 29, it says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, for he does not withdraw what he has given, nor does he change his mind about those whom he gives his grace, to whom he sends his call. And then you may be saying, well, pastor, that's good and well. Um, I know that the fivefold ministry is called, and I know I'm not called to be a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, a prophet, or an apostle. And yet you may not be called to be one of those, but you may be called to be in the ministry of helps. Amen. And I'm telling you, the ministries of helps are just as important it as the five full ministry gifts. Amen. Amen. And each one of you, you know, it's, a, a lot of you are in the ministry of helps and uh, you may be called, maybe you may not be called to put your hand to the plow per se in this church, maybe a teacher or an usher, but maybe you're called to financially support the church. Amen. Amen. So maybe God's raising you up to give into the kingdom of God to support the church so that we can grow. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, when you, you know, it's okay. I, I would be, I'd be okay to finance the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If God wants to make me a millionaire and, and or a, a, a 10, maybe I'd be a, a billionaire. I don't mind giving $900 million or 950 million or 990 million and living off a million. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? I'm, I'm okay. With, are you okay with that? Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm okay with that. I, I like the idea. You know, it, we, we preach and I preach a lot of times when well, you need a tithe and, and give 10% of your income. I would love to live off 10% of my income and give 90% of it away. You say, how can you do that, Pastor? Well, if God blesses you and you make 10 million a year, you could probably make a, you could probably live off of a million. Amen. Amen. Make 100 million a year, you could probably live off 10 million. I mean, how much money do you need to live, right? <laughs> I mean, once you got your house in place, I was talking to the Bill yesterday in, in our luncheon or our breakfast yesterday when we were eating and uh, at the um, men's breakfast uh, club. And it was an awesome time, by the way. Men, don't miss out on the breakfasts. Just to, I'm just letting you know, it, we have an awesome time at the breakfasts and we, we had steak and eggs yesterday. Glory to God. That's like a man, man's meal. Amen. And, uh, but we had a great time. And, you know, the Bible talks about uh, 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 iron sharpen, sharpening iron. 
So, so what we need to do is when we come together, we sharpen one another. Amen. We get better. Yeah. Amen. So hopefully when we come together in church, hopefully we're getting a little bit more better. Amen. Yeah. And so here he's saying that, that God has given each one of us gifts. And, um, and you may say, well, that's just for the fivefold ministry. But in Ephesians 4, 1, it says, therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, this is Paul, to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called of God. Ephesians 1. You have been called of God. So we're, we're all called. Amen. And I love what it says here, because sometimes when we're in our calling and sometimes when everything's working, sometimes we can get a little prideful. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, no. I mean, when money's in the bank, you're healthy, everything's going well. Sometimes we can get all caught up and we think that that that, you know, God cannot, you know, manage without us. So I'm going to say this. Stay humble. Amen. We need to stay humble. We need you, sometimes we're humble when we're believing God and we're not seeing and we're in the valley. But we need to be also humble. It's easy to be humble in the valley because you, because all you have is God in the valley. But when you're on top of the mountain, you have your you have money, you have your health Everything's working. And then we have a tendency to forget God. Amen. That, that's that was the plague of the Israelites. And all the time, they, God would bless them. And then they would start forgetting about God. And, and then they would start thinking other gods got them where they were at. Remember the children of Israel when Moses went up to get um, on the top of the mountain and to get the law, the Ten Commandments. And remember, they, they said, uh, uh, Moses has been gone for a long time, probably like three days. <laughs> he was up there for 40 days. And, uh, and uh, so maybe it was a week, maybe two, I don't know how long. But uh, they said, let's make a golden calf. Remember that? And of course, you know, uh, uh, Moses' brother, you know, I, he, he, he went ahead and he was a kind of a weak leader and he bowed to the wishes of the people. And, uh, and they made a calf, right? And they worshiped the calf, the golden calf. And they said that the calf was what brought them out of Egypt. H how dumb can they be? Amen. And so I'm telling you, we can get dumb without God. And we can get dumb without, without godly leadership that's speaking into our lives. When I was out of church, I became really dumb. Amen. Spiritually. I thought I had it all together, you know, in the world. But we can become dumb spiritually. And we don't want to do that. And so, and so it says here um, that we need to walk a life worthy of the calling that God has called us to. And he says, always be humble and gentle. Oh, pastor, you have to go there. Uh, be patient with, with each other. Hello. Make allowances for each other's faults. Oh, man, do you have to go there? Because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace. So, so this is an exhortation that Paul's giving us that we need to be humble and gentle. Amen. You know, one of my prayers, I was talking to my brother earlier, and one of my prayers that I pray on a daily basis, I, I pray four things. I pray that God will give me wisdom. Um, and we know that wisdom comes from the fear of God. So that's the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, God gives you wisdom. And so I'm asking God to give me wisdom beyond my ears. And number two, I ask God for an understanding heart. Amen. You know, we need to have an understanding heart because not everybody's where you're at in your faith. Amen. And you have to make allowances for where people are at in their faith. And so don't criticize and judge somebody where they're at in their faith. Amen. Amen. Is that good? In other words, everybody's at different levels in their faith. Hopefully I'm bringing up everybody to a higher level and each week you come out and every day that you serve God, hopefully we're moving, you know, closer to God and, and our faith is growing. Amen? Amen. So we need to look at your neighbor and say, stay humble. Stay humble. Amen. And so, and so I love this. And this is what I want to say because God has great things because, you know, we are in the last days. And, uh, you know, and I, I and we need to realize this, that that the, the coming of Jesus is imminent and, and it's it's soon. Jesus is coming sooner than we think. But I love this. It says here, uh, for there is one body. This is Ephesians chapter four, uh, chapter four, verse four. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. So we're called to one glorious hope 
to the future. I like that. In other, wa- in other, in other words, you've got to keep your eyes on the prize. Amen. Don't look at what the devil's doing, what the enemy's trying to do. No, no, keep your eyes on the prize. What did Jesus do? How did Jesus, how was Jesus able to endure, you know, the Pharisees coming against him and the Sadducees coming against him and people hating on him? How was he able to endure? He, he, he was able to endure because he was able to look past the cross and see us in heaven with him. Yes. Amen. So that's, so we need to look past the, maybe the, 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 the hard situations that we may be dealing with and look at that there is, there is good coming. Amen? And so, and so look at this because we've got to look at this in Matthew 24, 10, 14. And uh, I'm going to just recap a little bit on last week and move forward into my message. Um, it says, and uh, this is Jesus and he's speaking here and his followers asked him, you know, when will you set up your earthly kingdom? You know, when are we going to be done with ha- be having these ungodly rulers rule over us, uh, the Romans? When, when, are, when are we going to start ruling and reigning? So his disciples, they were, they were tired of the, the government telling them what to do. Can anybody relate here? But anyway, we'll continue. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> trying to control and manipulate us. Amen. <laughs> So we'll continue here. And, um, and, you know, because we're coming to a one world government. Amen. We're coming. You know, wh- why do you think they want to separate us six feet apart? Because if you have cell phones, that's how can they tell where we're at. OK, we'll continue. <laughs> Amen. Just a little bit. Glory to God. Amen. And so it says here in Matthew 24, 10, 14. It says, and then many will be offended Uh, This is Jesus. Jesus said, this is what's going to happen in the last days. And this is where we're at. He said that many will be offended. Now, you can look around and it seems like everybody's getting offended with something. You can look around. I mean, everybody's offended with something. And and it says says here, and then many will be offended. But he's not just talking about the world. He's talking about church members. He's talking about the body of Christ. We're going to get offended. Amen. It says that many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. That many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And I I don't like that word many. (laughs) I wish it said few. You know, I mean, couldn't they rewrite that and say few? Um, um, No, it says many, man. And, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many, man, that many keeps popping out of me. Many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So, so we, we, there, there's, you know, we got to endure to the end. Yes. Amen. And then it says here, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So, so there are two dynamics that are working in the end days. And, I, and I'm just refreshing you from last Sunday. Two dynamics. First of all, Christians will be falling away from the faith. Oh, it's quiet in this church today. There's going to be Christians being deceived and falling away from the faith. They're going to stop going to church. They're going to stop worshiping God. They're going to stop reading their Bible. They're going to stop praying. They're going to start leaning on the hand of mankind. They're, they're going to put their trust and faith in science. They're going to put their trust and faith in other philosophies. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? There's going to be a falling away. Say, not, not me. Amen. And, and then there's going to be, uh, but another dynamic, which is pretty exciting. The, there's a harvest of lost people that will be getting saved in the end days. And I believe including the backsliders coming back to, uh, coming back to God. I believe that they're sort of in that lost camp. Because you remember last week I said that there's three types of Christians. There's the awake Christians, the ones walking with God. There's the Christians that are dozing. They're in and out of their faith in God. And then there's they're sleeping. Amen. Wake up somebody that's sleeping next to you. Okay, we'll continue. And so, so we got to understand that. And we got to be awake. Somebody say awake up. Wake up. Amen. And, uh, and look at this. Because um, let's look at this because I talked about last week and you probably didn't remember uh, the title of the sermon. It's gifts and callings. But but we're called to be caught up. What does that mean? Jesus is coming back and he wants to uh, pick us up. Amen. I I believe that. I I believe that there's going to be the Bible actually says in the book of Revelation, there's going to be a seven year 
tribulation that's going to come on the earth and it's going to be the wrath of God coming down on this planet. Amen. And we don't want to be here when that happens. And I don't believe that the scriptures really bear it out that we will be here if we're walking with God and expectant and looking for his coming. Amen. But there is a possibility. Somebody say a possibility of some Christians not going up in the rapture. But some would preach and you may have heard messages. We're all going up. Uh, but I got a scripture that's going to knock your socks off that will tell you that we may not all go up. Oh, man. What, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to, I'm trying to sober some of us up to this morning. I, I, I want us walking tight with God. If there's any spots or wrinkles that's in our life, I want, I want us getting them out. Because Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, full of love and faith, right? So we got to get the spots and the wrinkles out. Amen. And uh, and so it says here, uh, let's look at Thessalonians. It says here, but concerning the times and seasons, brethren, this is Thess Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you for yourself. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord, that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And see, that's interesting that Paul got this revelation that the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. Uh, in other words, Jesus is coming back and, and the church, we should know the times. We know he can come back any time, but it's going to be like a thief in the night because to the world, we're going to depart here and the world's going to say, what happened? You know, in other words, the people down here that's not taken up with Christ, they're going to say, what happened to all the Christians? Right. And you know what they're going to make up? They're going to say there's going to be aliens that <laughs> taken us up. And then they're going to mark everybody so they can tell where everybody's at. And that's where you get the mark of the beast. But I'm just playing in on that. You know, there right now I saw. A, let me just say this. I saw a video on YouTube and it says and the caption of it was, have you been chipped? And in that video is it's a new technology where they put a chip in you and, and you can actually they showed it that you could actually buy a candy bar or a, or a Coke out of a Coke machine. And the person weighed their hand over it. I'm, going to, I'm saying this, that the Bible is true, Amen. that what, what's happening today, it's all in the Bible. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? You can that we have a we have a platform for the lost to let them know this is all in the Bible. And when we start telling the lost people that it's all in the Bible, they say, what? It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. They're going to freak out and they're going to come to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? It's in the Bible. Amen. And uh, and so so it says here that that Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. Amen. And so and and, and so it says here. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, but concerning the times and seasons, brother, you have no need that I should write to you for yourself. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor and pains upon a pregnant woman. So that's talking about the world they're, they're, because I'm going to say this, that this pandemic and all what's going on, it's going to go back to normal. And you say, how do you know that, Pastor? Because Jesus says in the last days, they're going to be um, uh, they're going to be uh, have uh, uh, they're going to be getting married. They're going to and if you get married, you normally have crowds of people and they're going to be conducting business as usual. And it's going to be like it's going to be like the days of Noah. Everything was going like normal. And I'm going to say this. It's going back to normal. This is just a test run. Amen. This is hopefully a wake up call. I mean, where we're at right now should be waking us up to get close to God. Amen. Amen. And so and so it says here, um, uh, it says, and they shall not escape talking about the world. But but you, brethren, are not in darkness. We're not in darkness so that the day should uh, overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not the, of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Notice he says that. Remember I said there's some Christians that are sleeping and other and let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. Somebody say watch and pray. The Bible says that we need to constantly watch and pray. It's OK to pray with your eyes open. Amen. <laughs> watch 
and pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In other words, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So the devil's out here to devour, of course, the world, worldly people, but he's also to devour Christians that don't know who they are in Christ and what they have in Christ. Amen. So we, we need to be sober. So in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 and 9, it says, but let us who are the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet of hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a scripture that um, the pre-tribbers use. A pre-tribber is somebody that believes that Jesus is coming before the seven year tribulation. And uh, there's mid-tribbers uh, mid and post-tribbers. Amen. And I don't have time to explain all that. Mid-tribbers believe that, that Jesus come back in the middle. And some believe that we're going through the whole thing. And so look at this because I'm going to I'm going to help you this morning. And I read this because um, have you guys ever studied and we studied this probably a little bit uh, about the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Remember about the seven churches in the book of Revelation. And so Jesus uh, talks to John, the apostle John, and, 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 and has John write a letter called the, Re uh, the Revelation or Revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, in, that, in that letter, the book of Revelation, which is, it, it tells you everything that's going to go down. Um, he talks about seven churches. And those seven churches, uh, God rebuked five of them. One of them was so persecuted he couldn't rebuke. And, uh, or he didn't rebuke. But he, he, he rebuked five of those churches. And I thought about that. And in my prayer time, I said, Lord, I don't want to be the church that you rebuke. I don't want Exceed Life Church to be the rebuke church. So I said, I want to be the church that wasn't rebuked. I want to be the church. And there was, there was, there was one church called the Philadelphia Church. That wasn't rebuked. Amen. How many people don't want to be rebuked? Amen. <laughs> and I don't want to be the pastor of the church being rebuked. Amen. And, uh, and so I said, God, I want our church, I want Exceed Life Church to expire to be like the Philadelphia church. The church of brotherly love. Amen. So, 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 so I want the church to be the church of that we love one another. That we support, and that we don't hate on people outside the church. And that we love people outside the church. Amen. And so this is really good because this this really goes in with my message from last week. And this kind of backs up what I say that not all Christians might not make it in the rapture. Amen. If you're out there and you're walking away from God and you're backslidden. Now, of course, we're calling our backslidden relatives back in. They're coming back in. Amen. Because your prayers are going to make a difference and they're going to come in and our prayers are going to get them in. Amen. So don't worry about those that are backslidden right now because we're going to fast and pray for them and they're coming in. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. OK, so in, in Revelation three, it says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has a key of David. He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. So we see here that, that Jesus is really speaking about himself. Jesus uh, is the one that is holy. Jesus is the one that is true. Jesus is the one that has the key of David who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one's open. So I'm going to say this. If God is opening a door, don't worry about the devil trying to shut it. Because what, the, what God opens, no man can shut. Amen. And then if you're trying to get through a door and it doesn't open, it might be God saying, that's not the door for you. Are oh, you listening to what I'm saying to you today? In other words, God's trying to protect you. God's trying to protect you and keep you in a place where you can walk in the fullness of his blessings and his callings and his giftings. Amen. And so it says here that 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 Jesus has the key and um. It says here, I, uh, that he who opens and no one shuts and shuts, no one's opens. I know your works. Now, now Jesus knows each one of our works. Amen. He says, see, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have little strength and kept my word and have not denied my name. Now, when I look at this church, it seems like that it's a church that doesn't really have a lot of influence. 
It might be a church that's doing well, and, 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 but it's not a church out there that's like a, you know, what you would call a mega church that has super, uh, super amount of influence and, and has all this wealth and all that. It, it's a church that's just, just doing the gospel and just, just doing the best that, is, that, that the church can do and with, with the resources it has and, 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 and still maintaining true, not selling out the, 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 the truth for a, for a message that just soothes people, just, just brings crowds in, but brings no conviction. There's churches out here that you can, it, 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 you, you can sit and you feel no conviction power at all. And see, and it's like, every, you know, you're good. God's good. Everything's good. Everything's going to turn out OK. It's good. But not everything is good. Amen. Not if you're not walking with God. Right. Not if you're outside his will. Not if you're not doing what he's calling you to do. It may not be good for you. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's not good for the backslider. Amen. It's not all good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so it can be good. But we got to get we got to wake up to make it good. Amen. And so he says here, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. In other words, in other words, he's saying to the, to the Philadelphia church, you you kept true to to the word of God and you did not compromise the message. Sometimes the enemy will make one of us to compromise uh, our walk with God. And I like to say this, whatever you compromise to keep, you're going to lose. Amen. You cannot compromise. You, it, you know, the devil wanted Jesus to compromise when he was in the wilderness. Remember, Jesus was in the wilderness and, and, and he was drawn by the Holy Spirit to go into the wilderness to be tested of the devil. And basically the devil said, you don't need to go the way of the cross. You can take a shortcut. Remember the third temptation? I'll give you it all. You don't have to go the way to the cross. I, it was handed to me. Remember, Satan said, all this, the world, all the riches and the blessings of the world was handed to me. And I can give it to anybody I want. And I will give it to you if you bow down and worship me. In other words, what, what uh, uh, Satan was saying to Jesus is, you don't need to go to the cross. You don't need to pay the price. You can take a shortcut. And what did Jesus said? Get behind me, Satan. You shall only worship. In other words, see, the devil, if he can find a price, if he can find something that 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 he can lure you and say, listen, uh, w w w will you stop serving God if I do this for you? Will you stop? Sir, are you? Is there a price? Amen. Not not for me. I don't care. You could give me. I, I, I'm not going to. Somebody could say, I'll write you a check for a billion dollars if you renounce your calling. Stop. Stop uh, preaching the gospel. I would say keep your billion dollars. Because what is it to gain the whole world, to have everything in this life and lose your soul in hell? What is it to gain everything but lose your soul in hell? I, I, no. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll take what I got. Thank you very much. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? In other words, there's no amount of wealth. There's no amount of anything that's going to sway me from serving God and obeying God and walking with God. Why? Because heaven's way too good. My relationship with God is way too good. I'm not going to jeopardize that for money, prestige, or whatever the enemy will try to give you to, to try to suck you into to, to serve him. Amen. Are we, are, 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 is this a sober message today or what? Say, I'm not giving up. I'm not backing up. <laughs> Man, I'm moving forward in God. And so it says here that he, is, uh, he has... Uh, Let's, let's read this again. I have set before you an open door. No one can shut it for you have little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who says that they are Jews and are not but lie. Indeed, I'll make them come worship before your feet and know that I love you. I love this because there's going to always be people that tell you that what you're doing is wrong. And, 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 and there might be relatives saying, why are you going to that church? And what is that church doing for you? And 
and all that. And, and, and pretty soon they're going to see the blessing on your life. And then they're going to pretty soon God's going to show his love because you're faithful. And they're going to see the blessing on your life. And then they're going to come back to you and repent and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Do you believe that? I believe that. It says, because you have kept my commandment to persevere, underline persevere, I will, now this is where it's at. This is what I'm saying to you this morning. Because you have kept my commandment to persevere, I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. So what is he saying here? He's saying that, that he will keep us from the hour of trial. What do he say? The seven-year tribulation. He's, in other words, we got to, why? He said he will keep us from the hour. What does that mean? That, that when that trump sounds, we'll be raised up with Christ. Amen. And it says here, behold, I am coming quickly. Notice that's connected. Amen. Hold fast. Now look at this. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. What does that mean to hold fast? Because, see, we got to hold on to what we have. We got to stand firm. We got to make sure because the enemy is going to try to do everything he can to take it away from us. The enemy is going to try to take our health away. The enemy is going to try to take our finances away. The enemy is going to try to take our relationships away. The enemy is working against us. And we got to stand firm. When you've done all, stand and keep standing. Amen. I believe that. I believe you might be in a trial right now. You might be in a situation, maybe a financial trial, maybe a relationship trial, whatever trial you might be in, a health issue. I'm telling you, you keep standing firm. Stand firm. Persevere because you will see the salvation of the Lord. I, do you believe that today? It's coming. The blessing's coming. You may not be in the full blessing right now, but it's coming. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? So right here, it says here that uh, it says here that no one take your crown. And then he says, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I'll write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the uh, Spirit is saying to the churches. Say, say we, are we are the Philadelphia church. Philadelphia. Amen. The church of brotherly love. That's what I aspire us to be. Now, look at Hebrews 10, 35 and 39 quickly. And it says here, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of endurance. And another word for that is perseverance. You have need of perseverance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise for a little while. And he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Talking about Jesus coming back. Now the just shall live by faith. But anyone who draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those who draw back to perdition but those who believe in the saving of the soul. So, so there's a, so we, we see this, that through the, the letters written to the church in the New Testament, we see a, 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 a line that goes through and it talks about people following God and people backing off of God. And right here is saying here that, that we don't back off the things of God. He says, we don't back off. The, we, no, we keep pressing in. Amen. To the saving of the soul. And last week I minister on called to be caught up because when we're walking with God now, now listen, how are you going to be guaranteed to be caught up? I'm, I'm going to help you with that. Guaranteed to be caught up is number two things. Always examine yourself where you're at in your faith. The Bible talks about examine yourself. Where are you at? Are you walking in faith or are you walking in fear? Are you governed by fear or faith? Are you walking in love or are you walking in arrogance and pride? So it says here that we need to examine ourselves constantly. The Bible examines us. The Bi you know, we read the Bible, but the Bible reads us. So, so when we read the Bible and we're not lining up in some area of the Bible, we need to line up with the Bible, right? So the Bible can read us. So we examine ourselves. And number two, if you're going to be raptured, you need to judge yourself. So examine yourself and judge yourself. Because if you judge yourself, that means that you're going to 
line yourself up with God's word, obey him, you judge yourself, you're, you're, you're going to quit doing the things that displease God. Uh, am I preaching this morning? In other words, I'm praying every day, God, I want to make sure I'm walking in you. I got the right heart attitude and all this. And are you listening to what I'm saying today? In other words, repentance is, is still for the believer today. It's not just for the sinner. We, we still are called to repent at times. What does repent mean? It means turning away from our thing and turning to God, God's thing. Turning away from our ways and turning to God's ways. We're still called to repent. Amen. And so it says, last week I ministered called to be caught up. And, we, and, and I just want to just hit on a couple of things. Reason why we back off and move forward in that we're called to be a testimony for the Lord. Amen. That's, that's a title of this sermon. So it says here, uh, uh, number one, the reason why people back off because we get discouraged through trials. Now, I said this last week, we get uh, discouraged through trials. When we, when we encounter trials, discouragement comes in. And when discouragement comes in, it makes us want to quit. Is that right? And so, we, so the enemy, his whole goal is to get us discouraged. Isn't that right? To take the courage out of us. But 2 Timothy 3.12 says this way. In fact, everyone who wants to live godly in life in Christ, Jesus, will be persecuted. So, so if we want to live godly... If we want to live a godly life, we're going to be persecuted. Amen. In other words, there's going to be people that's going to shun us. There's going to be family relatives that don't want to hang out with us because we're walking with God. There's going to be people ditzing us. Amen. And so in Timothy, uh, I like it says in the Amplified, indeed, all who delight in piety and determine to live a devoted and godly life in Christ Jesus will meet with persecution, will be made to suffer because of their religious stand. And so we know this because uh, even when you're in the will of God, there's going to be some hard times. There's going to be people doing you wrong. You know, when, when Paul and Silas, when they were preaching in Philippi, in, in the city of, uh, of Philippi, they were preaching and they were doing a good work and they were called to that city. And then, of course, you remember that Paul, Paul cast out a, a demon out of this one lady. They kept following them around and the lady followed him around and said, these are people, the high, most high God. They, you know, but who wants a demon possessed lady, you know, uh, uh, you know, telling everybody about how your ministry, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> promoting your ministry. Oh, that's the soothsayer over there promoting their ministry. It makes them look like they're connected. Right. And Paul got so grieved. Right. He said, oh, in the name of Jesus, I command you come out of her. And so that demonic spirit came out of her. And so, you know, you know, the devil has an anointing, too. And, you know, the devil can anoint people, too. And the devil can move on people, too, to do things. You know, Hitler was anointed by the devil. He was able to get millions of people to follow him. Is that right? So he had a charisma. Is that right? So he was able to. How did Hitler able to kill six million Jews and be able to do all that the atrocities? Because the devil can anoint people, too. To do evil. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? But I'm saying greater is God's anointing on us than the anointing that the devil places on other people. Amen. And that anointing that was on that on that lady wasn't stronger than the anointing that was on the apostle Paul. And he cast that demon out. And guess what happened? He's doing the right things and they get thrown in prison. And they get beat for the gospel. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And so we can be doing some good things and still get beat up every once in a while. But you still need to rejoice because the Bible says when you get beat up for God, it says rejoice because your reward is great. So start being excited about getting beat up every once in a while. You're like, I don't think I can sell that to you guys. I'm excited, Pastor, about getting smacked around by the world. <laughs> in other words, Paul says, I bear the marks of my body of serving Christ. You know, Paul, you know, you know Paul was beat. Paul was stoned. And I'm not saying he got a six pack of beer for the night. You know, he was rocks were thrown at him. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, he, he bared the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, our wounds are that as serving God it is a witness of our love for Christ. Has anybody ever been wounded? Amen. In here. And you and all you were trying to do was do what's right. And we got wounded. What? And, and so why don't you think, think we're not God's raising us up, but we're just like our master, Jesus. 
and Jesus got wounded and Jesus got beat. And we're going to there's going to be every once in a while we're going to endure some hardships. Let's put it that way. Endure some hardships. Amen. But we're not going to renounce the name of Jesus. Amen. We're not going to renounce the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll use the name of Jesus and back the devil off. Amen. Amen. That's another message. But I have told you this in uh, John 16, 33. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world, you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. So, so even if we're in a situation where things are, you still can have peace. You can have peace in the middle of this pandemic. You can have peace in the middle of your financial storm. You still can have peace because it's not over yet. You still can have peace. Amen. And, and I like what it says in John 16, 33, Amplified. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration. Has anybody dealt with any of those issues? Has anybody out here been distressed? Has anybody out here been frustrated? Has, why? This isn't our home. This should remind us that we're going to a better place. We're going to be frustrated. We're, we're, going to, we're going to be distressed at times. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, be undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived its, of its power to harm you and conquer you. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? It, listen, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. You say, Pastor, you say that every week. I'm trying to get it in you. you I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you, 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 you keep repeating yourself. I, I, there's a reason. <laughs> God says, keep, keep going. Keep, keep telling them that because they keep forgetting every day that they're losing. You're not losing. Amen. You're winning in Jesus' name. As long as you keep getting up, you keep praying, you keep speaking the word, it doesn't matter what it looks like, you're winning. And number two, distraction of other things. See, he will, he will discourage us to get us to quit, back off the things. The devil will. The devil will distract us with other things. Mark 4, 19. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness and riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke out the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So... So the distraction of other things, the enemy wants us to get distracted. Amen. Uh, Mark uh, 4, 19, the NSB says, But the worries of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of other things enter in, choke out the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So what is the devil? The devil doesn't want us to be fruitful. The devil doesn't want us standing on God's word. The devil wants us standing on, on our own understanding. No, no, no. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, he shall direct you back. Number three, the devil wants to divide us through offense. Like I said earlier in the, my message this morning, everybody seems to be getting offended. Everybody be, is getting offended. And we, we need to be very careful we're not in the offense camp. That we're harboring ill will and bitterness and all that. So Mark 13, 21 says it this way, the King James Version, ye have... Uh, ye hath he not root in himself, but durst for a little while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. So, so whenever you start standing on the word of God, the devil's going to test your stance on the word of God. And the whole devil's uh, goal is to get you offended with God. That's right. uh, uh, my prayers aren't being answered. Uh, things aren't working. And you get either mad at God or get mad at the pastor or get mad at the church. Amen. Amen. It works. God word works. So, so my, my, let me say this. United we stand, divided we fall. And so what the enemy trying to do? He's trying to divide us. He's trying to get people out of church. He's trying to get us away from the body of Christ. He's trying to get us away from the covering of God in our life. Amen. And, and it says here, um, and Jesus knew their thoughts, Matthew 12, 25. And said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself should not stand. So what is the enemy trying to do? He's trying to get us divided with one another. Amen. He's trying to get us divided. And we can't go there. Say, I'm not going there. Amen. And it says here in the end days, um, it says here in Matthew 24, 7, 8. This is Jesus talking to his disciples that in the end days. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So, so that word nation is ethnos, which means people groups. 
So people groups are going to be coming against each other in the last days. People groups say, I'm not going to be a part of that. Amen. And it says here, so, so we, we're, we're, we, we bring unity and love. Amen. So, so how are we going to stand in these trying times and not get sucked into the vortex of this crep world system? How, how are we going to do this? We, we need to do this. I didn't hit on this last week on how to, how to keep from being sucked into the vortex of the lust of this world. Uh, we got a, in Proverbs 4.23, it says this, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. And above all that you guard, for out of it flows and springs of that flow the springs of life. So what what is God what, what is God saying to us in His Word in Proverbs? He's saying uh, in in the NIV, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So what happens is is that if we're not guarding our heart. In other words, if we're allowing everything, if we're watching way too much news and, 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 and paying attention to all the bad things happen, the, the negativity of this world can enter into our heart and we can become a cynical person. We're not called to be cynical. We're called to walk in joy and peace. Amen. In other words, that's what makes us attractive to the world when, when we're still walking in joy and peace and everything else is falling apart. And so we, if we if we pay too much attention to what the devil's doing, it can it, it can creep into our hearts and we can get cynical about the situation. And we can't we can't allow a cynical attitude to stay. Are you listening? To what I say? We can get mad about it and say, man, uh, and yeah, it's OK to get angry about it. Fast and pray. You know, start praying and speaking and commanding and expecting God to change things. Glory to God. Do something about it. How can I do something about it? You got power. You can do something about what's going on. We can do something about what's going on in this country. We need to be praying for our leaders instead of criticizing them. Pray for them. Amen. Listen, your fight. My fight is not against the corrupt politicians out here. Because my fight is not against flesh and blood. They're being led by, by uh, demonic spirits. And, and Jesus said, don't worry about the Pharisees. And they, they, they were kind of like the corrupt politicians of today. The Pharisees and Sadducees were a lot like the politicians today. And Jesus said, don't worry about them. They're the blind leading the blind and they're going to end up in a ditch. Just don't worry about them. But we can pray for them. And maybe God can maybe pull some of them out of the fire. Pray for them that God will wake them up. Are yeah. oh, you hear what I'm saying? Hey, pray for them. Yeah. Amen. And pray for ourselves. Right. Amen. And so, and so uh, we need to make sure that we're, we're very careful that, that, that we're not, you know, criticizing and minimizing people that are in the darkness. We need to pray for them. Amen. Because if it wasn't for God, we'd be there too. Right. I was talking to Yen and Yen said, I got to close this down. I was talking to Yen. Yen said, you know what? Uh, I used to stand on a certain party and, and, and that party, um, you know, there's two parties, you know, I guess there's three, um, but two main parties, you know, you got the Republicans and the Democrats. And, uh, and so, uh, and, and she said, I used to stand on this one party, but when I found out that this one party stands for abortion and stands for, uh, you know, uh, the dismantlement of the, of, of, the, of the family unit by standing with same-sex marriage and all this, I don't stand with that platform anymore Amen. because I'd be standing with the devil. I have to stand with a platform that's closer to God. Amen. So when we're Christians and we're standing for a platform that, that endorses abortion and all these things, we're standing with the devil. Uh, th just a warning. We will be judged for that. Amen. We need to stand for what God stands for. Righteousness. Amen. 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 I, I approve. I'm, I'm Pastor Dave. I approve this message. OK. Amen. So we'll continue. I'm making some of you mad probably, but amen. That's all right. God will heal your toes. Amen. If I step on them. And so anyway, we need to guard our heart for out of it flows the issues of life. How are we going to guard our heart? Uh, the Bible talks about in James, and I'm closing this down. In James, we got us. Uh, it says, therefore, submit to God. James 4, 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have to um, uh, submit to God's authority in our life. We got to submit to God's ways. Amen. We got to adhere to his word. Amen. And then we have the power to resist the devil. Amen. In other words, the, the, the devil, what he's trying to lie to us about. 
We resist his lies and then he has to flee. Amen. So so how do we do that? How do we do that? We guard what we think on. So the Bible says in Colossians 2, 8, it says, see to that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of this world, rather than according to Christ. So, so what is the enemy trying to do? He's trying to corrupt our thinking. He's trying again. He's trying to make us think, well, science and the doctors say you got to be six feet apart. You got to wear a mask. You got to do all this stuff and that will protect you. No, God will protect you. Yes, it might be a deterrent. I'm not against that. But but it's still that still doesn't mean you're protected. No, no. God will protect you. Science tells you it's not protected anyway. I bought one of these masks. And uh, and it says it will not. It, it had actually had a disclaimer. It will not keep you from getting sick. <laughs> and it was a hard and it, it came. And I think the mask was made in China, but it said it won't keep you from getting sick. It, you still have the possibility. The germs can still go through. It was a disclaimer on that. And I said, wow, I thought it was like foolproof. It's not. Only God is foolproof. Amen. Standing with God is foolproof. Having faith. You know, living this life in faith. Amen. So guard what you think on because the enemy will try to get us to think in the world's way. I like what it says in the NSB. It says for the weapons of our warfare. This is um, Second Corinthians. This is how we deal with wrong thoughts. that are coming and penetrating our mind, telling us that we could catch the corona. You're not going to catch it. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing that raised up against the knowledge of God. And we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So what 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 the apostle Paul is saying is the enemy is going to try to lie to us, get us thinking worldly. And we got to cast down those imaginations and say, I'm not going to think like that. I'm not going to think that the devil's going to win. I'm not going to think that he's going to win in my finances or in my relationships or in my health. No, no, no. I'm winning because I'm I'm standing with the Lord Jesus Christ and he has already won. He has already beat the devil. The devil has been dethroned twice, once in heaven when he dropped down like lightning and a second time when Jesus was raised from the dead. He's, he's dethroned twice. And he's dethroned every day that you stand up for God. Every time you come to church, you're dethroning the devil. Every time you pick up the Bible, you're dethroning the devil. Every time you pray a prayer, you're dethroning the devil. Every time you witness the goodness of God, you're telling the devil he's nothing. He has no power over you but what you give him. And that power is only through wrong thinking. If we think wrong, we'll believe wrong. If we believe wrong, we'll act wrong. If we act wrong, we'll reap the whirlwind. Amen. Pastor, this is a little strong this morning. Sometimes we need a strong message. Amen. Amen. And so what do we need to do? Do not be conformed. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So, so we need to be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So what do we think on? You know, if we're not going to think on what the devil's doing, well, we think on what God is doing. We think of, of, of what God has already done and what God is going to do. Amen. We think about that. We think about, we think about it. Jesus. Listen, listen, our best days are ahead of us. I'm going to say it again, we haven't seen the, the you, we, some of you have been blessed in this church. You've seen the grace and the mercy of God on your lives. God's blessed you in your finances and done some things for you, but you haven't seen anything yet. God's about ready. He's going to bring us out with silver and gold and there will not be one feeble person among our congregation. He brought the children of Israel out with silver and gold. And there was not one uh, feeble person among their tribes. And we have a better covenant based on better promises. So he's bringing us out. You might be saying, well, I'm suffering financially. He's going to bring you out of it. He's going to bring out your financial deficit. He's going to turn it around. But you've got to believe it. You've got to expect it. You've got to believe it. You've got to put your faith on gear, online, glory to God. You've got to believe that he can do that. 
He can turn it around in a New York second. Do you believe that today? So we, I'm closing this down. What do we need to think on? Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says this way. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good repute, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. That The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things that the God of peace will be with you, glory to God. The God of peace will be with you. Amen. So listen, listen, stop focusing. We don't need to be focusing on what the losing world is doing. Yes, we need to be aware. And I'm not saying not be aware and not be informed. We should be informed so we, so we know how to pray. But, but let's not be so focused. Let's focus on the goodness of what God is doing. You believe that today? Man, I, man, I am not even finished with my sermon, but I'm going to have to finish it up next week. Glory to God. I'm telling you, when we start thinking right, believing right, we'll start acting right. And I'm telling you, just, just following God, you'll just fall into your calling. Follow him and just seek God's heart every day. And I'm telling you, God will bring you in. You don't even have to try. God will bring you in to the calling of God in your life. That's why you need to be praying the Ephesians prayers. God, I'm asking you to, to, to bring to me so I can receive the hope of your calling in my life. I pray these prayers every day that, that God will just continue to reveal to me the calling that he has for me and what he's calling me to do for this church and what he's calling me to do for the city of Virginia Beach and what he's calling us to do for, 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 Virginia, for Virginia and the, and the United States. I believe that God's calling this church to be a mighty church for him. He's calling you to be a mighty person for him. And I'm telling you, we were never called to be average and ordinary. No, we were called to be extraordinary. And I'm telling you, God is raising up giants in the end days. And I'm looking at giants today. You are a giant going somewhere to happen. Do you believe that? If you receive it, say amen. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for your mercies. I thank you for your goodness and your love. And I just thank you, Father God, that you are doing great and mighty things. Yes, the devil's working, Father. But you are working too. And you're greater than the devil. You're greater than poverty. You're greater than sickness. You're, you're greater than offense. Love overcomes all things. And Father, I thank you for the precious people here this morning. I, I, I thank you, Father, for those that are watching online. And, and, and I, I just want to just encourage you. If you're not walking with God, if you're living your life for yourself and, and just, you just, just getting just enough God to make it to heaven, uh, you, 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 need, you need a better relationship with, to God than that. And, and, I, and maybe you never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, and I'm telling you, don't wait because the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You may not have another chance to receive Christ. So, so pray this prayer with me if you're ready to move forward with God in the audience and watching online. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. I turn my back on sin and darkness and I turn fully to you, Father God. And I receive you today, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.